Seth. All right. Hey, Thank guys. You. Ooh, how's it going? Welcome to another uh, Tuesday education stream. I feel like we haven't streamed in a while. <laughs> yeah, we. it's been a whole week, actually, yeah. since our last one. Because um, we got Spark So 2 out there, and that yep. was a, a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, it was. So, what are we doing today, Thomas? Um, first thing we're doing is checking audio to make sure yeah. everybody's not, ears aren't getting blown That's out. That's a good point. Yeah. And we're checking audio to make sure that our voices aren't too loud or too quiet. So, yep. let us know. Let us know in chat. Um, but on topic, so what are we covering today? So we are reverting back over to our um, shooter stuff that, I guess we did talk about it last week, although that was more about the importing of images. Yeah, um, that's right. Not so much on the, the shooteriness. Um, but what we're looking at today is weapon switching, uh, switching and how to basically have like a weapon inventory. And we're going to keep it pretty simple. Uh, just a simple, um, you can carry, you have one weapon equipped and one weapon in reserve, and you can switch between those. Uh, let me show an example. So that's the Halo model, right? Yep, that is. Primary whatever, weapon, switch to secondary weapon. Yeah, and whatever you have equipped is the one that you would switch out if you're picking up another weapon. Yep. So you can definitely do more involved ones. You can do, like, full inventory where you have, like, 30 weapons to choose from, kind of like Borderlands or something, or you can do... Uh, you know, something like Gears of War where you have four slots and, you know, that's something I've done before. So, those are pretty cool with D-pad, actually. Mm -hmm. Speaking of Gears, wow, this guy's freaking out. Um, speaking of Gears of War, I played Gears of War Ultimate Edition for like three hours last night. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And that was the best thing ever. So, if you are a Gears fan, let me know in chat or send me a uh, note on the forum. We can play together. I was actually, I'm going to be playing a lot of Gears. <laughs> yeah, I was actually playing a lot of The Witcher 2 last night. Not The Witcher really? 3. Yeah, The Witcher on, 2. I, I went on back. 360? No, I actually have it on PC. I went back to play oh, it again. Because cool. um, it's been a long time. I never actually finished it, so I want to go through and finish it before getting The Witcher 3. Which I know Witcher 3 came out a while ago. but it's Yeah, been, that's like on my busy. wish list. Actually, so after I wrap up Dragon Age, I'm really close. Um, I'm going to probably do Arkham Knight actually now. Mm. I ended up, I'm uh, kind of game sharing with my brother, and um, I owed him some money, so I bought Arkham Knight so he <laughs> could play it, and yeah, so now he is playing that, and he really wants me to play it, so I think I'm going to do that, and it's supposed to be really good, actually. I'm yeah, I've heard so. good things. All right, so what are what are we going to get to? What's the end result, hopefully, by the end of the day? Um, it, hopefully, it shouldn't take us too long to get there, actually, so we can kind of rift on some stuff, but so you'll see in the top corner, I got equip weapon, nothing, secondary, nothing. I'm going to pick up my first... And now I have an equipped pistol, I have my uh, clip count, and my reserve ammo count, and then I also have a display for the shoot brain. Um, we saw that last week with a, where we are when you pick this up, it's pushing your brain on my character, so it'll have, like, the nice pistol behavior. Um, mm -hmm. So there you go. And then you'll see that I have secondary weapon stills, nothing. So that's, oh. like, the inventory. You know what I just realized? Case. Yeah. Battle stations just came out, and it's free, and we don't have any two-handed weapons on Showcase I, I can rectify that right yeah. now. Let me, let me fix that. Okay. So for those of you who don't know, Battle stations came out on Thursday. It's free for everybody. It is a total of okay. zero credits in our marketplace. Let's swap mesh this guy. So, yeah, let's, let's bring in some of that Battle Station yeah. stuff. Good point. I didn't think about that for some reason. And the whole reason we were doing a bunch of weapon stuff was for was battle, four battle stations. stations. Yeah. And then it comes out and then we don't <laughs> do it. Okay, well, I'm going to do a laser cannon because that seems... For the rocket launcher? Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And let's switch out a couple of these here. Okay, you... Shotgun. Oh, we are I know have exactly. Shotgun, yeah. yeah, let's do that. Uh, edit. Swap mesh. We're going to go with this guy. The laser rifle without its upgrades. And then let's do pistol, can stay the same. And gravity gun. Do we want to do anything fancy? I like that yeah, as a Yeah, I like gun. that as, as the gravity gun. All right, cool. It reminds me of the, the cricket from Men in Black. Little tiny thing, packs huge punch. Yeah. Cool. Okay, there's that. I think that's hopefully scaled appropriately to my character. Yeah, I think the shotgun might be a bit big for them. So something like that should be good. Okay. Yeah, it's important when you're working with two-handed weapons, scale it down so it fits within the two hands of your character. Uh, you'll have to kind of compensate yeah. for that. Those are so nice. Look at those. Yeah, yeah, I know. Cool. Good idea. Good suggestion. All right, so back what we're actually trying to do. So I have a pistol, and I can shoot. 
And reload. Oh, there we go. All right, now I picked up my rocket launcher. Oh, my God, it looks like... Oh, it's so much... It's like <laughs> night and day, the last one compared to this rocket launcher. Oh, yep. nice. So, Very nice. Rocket launcher now. So you can see I have my ammo count and all that's good. And then I have my shoot brain is rocket shoot. And then I have my secondary, my pistol moved into my secondary slot. So it knew that I was picking it up and it needed to shift it over. Let's make sure... So, it does oh, I need to. Uh, you need to probably update the oh, update the fire position now because I had, we had a really tiny gun, so I had to fire right from the point of that yeah. gun, we have and to now we have a huge gun. So um, yeah, because I set an actual position in world where it shoots from, yeah, and so it's so, blown up in my face right yeah, now. Yeah, exactly. So it's like it's hitting the gun before it actually leaves the gun. Gotcha. Not a, not a great designed rocket. <laughs> no, nope, not at all. Rocket launcher that fires and explodes before it leaves the canister. <laughs> And so the switch happens now. So after I pick up and I can have two, I can actually, um, so I'm using Y in this case on the controller and I can switch between those two weapons. So I magically can put that giant rocket launcher in my pocket and I can switch between them here. And what's cool, you'll notice like it remembers what my MO um, is at for all of these. So as I switch, like it'll remember where my bullets are at and all that, so it's all good things. And it remembers to update uh, the shoot brain, which I was having problems with that actually just prior to the stream. So I was rushing to get that done. Um, so what happens when you pick up your like third weapon? Uh, I don't think we set that. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> we we uh -oh. rushed to get the other two. I'm, I'm going into uncharted territory. Yeah. I mean, we could do that real fast, but it's a preview to what we're going to try to do from scratch. <laughs> uh, Why are there no two-handed shoot animations? Uh, there are. It depends on what you're talking about. Um, there's so like if you the, so the characters are very static when they're holding their two-handed weapons, uh, and that, there's a point to that because if the character is like moving it around, it wouldn't make for uh, a great-looking way to, to shoot stuff. But what you'll notice is when you're shooting, there's actually a recoil on the two-handed um, weapons being shot. So that's the animation, that recoil of the weapon that you, that you'll see. Um, but it's it stays static for a reason. And you know, you look at the shoot animations for one-handed weapons; they also have a very static kind of shoot. Um, uh, animation as well because you know you want to shoot forward you don't want to really uh, overdo the animation aspect of it it's kind of um, you know this is key instance of form over function uh, it may look more beautiful to have like a full like backwards like your hands are yeah. on backwards with it but then it doesn't really uh, if you're kind of shooting fast then animation becomes not too great okay this should work now shotgun boom boom oh that looks good Boom, boom. Yep. So you notice, like, you notice the recoil on the weapon there. That's yep. kind of, that's the animation right there, that recoil. And then switch over to the gravity gun, and I can shoot my really fun, crazy gravity, gravity well that we made two weeks ago. So yep. So just like that, I quickly jumped into that <laughs> while you were talking. <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right. So you awesome. fixed it. Yep. Awesome. So let us do this now from scratch. Feel free to ask questions along the way. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, um, we're not starting fully from scratch. We're going oh, we're yeah, building yeah, on top of a few past starting streams. From scratch two weeks ago. How about um, end of the stream? Let's uh, sh let's share this out. Yeah, I know there's going to be some DLC in it, but yeah, we can share it out and then we can look at removing that. I'm going to close this door fully. Oh, I didn't catch because we were loud and we're, I know we're, we're so loud, and obnoxious. Yeah, we're we're obnoxiously <laughs> loud, so we should. Cool. Um, so now I switched over, so I'm back here. To, this is the character that we left two weeks ago, basically. So this is everything that we saw before. He can pick up things, and there you go. He's switching between all those weapons that Brian made. Yep. And there's those goblins over there. Cool. All right. So how do we start with actually switching weapons? Let us take a look. It's going to be a lot of the work's going to be done actually in the character brain, which I think makes sense in this case. Let's go down here. So, first thing we have to think about is him actually picking up weapons. Um, so, the button that is actually doing that is this X press interact. And if it is part of this global set, it's going to make it the equipped, uh, equipped weapon equals it. Um, that's not necessarily always going to be the case now. And we need to make sure uh, this gets updated if we're. Um, including another uh, slot. So let's look at that first. So I'm going to start adding some child lines here. Let's bring that one down. Okay. And 
we're going to introduce a new object variable that is going to be called secondary weapon right here. And we need to know when this is full or not. So like, if you think, okay, this is going to be empty at the beginning, actually, I'm not going to have any weapons, and then I'm slowly going to pick up one first that's going to go to my main slot, and then I'm going to end up picking up a second weapon, and then that weapon's going to shift to my secondary slot. And then from that point on, I'm going to have two weapons. So there's kind of that unique case where I need to have that behavior get um, set. So let's go to compare here. So we're going to have some things happen when secondary weapon is equal to nothing. Nothing. There we go. Okay. So this, let's see. First, we're going to have... I just want to make sure I retain the behavior that I had before. So we're going to nest that. So this is going to happen the first pickup. Just like that. And what game engine is Project Spark made in? We it, This is actually a custom game engine we made. Um, it, uses, it uses quite a few different things, actually, um, in inside of it. Um, we have Kodu, which is... Uh, our code is based on Kodu, which is another Microsoft property. Um, I think people people have found have found this out, so we have no reason to hide it. But we do use part of the Havoc physics engine, um, and then we have a lot of uh, custom built pieces of our engine too. There you go. Yeah, there's a bunch. It's kind of a assembled of different things. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, cool. So secondary weapon equals nothing, and then we're going to maintain that behavior. Okay, so when this equals nothing, what do we want to be able to do? So if the equip, there, there's an equip weapon, right? Um, we're going to do some sliding action. So an equip weapon eventually is going to be become the secondary weapon. So we're going to say that there. And the equip weapon, current equip weapon, is going to be okay. it. And we're going to make sure that this is picked up in our character's inventory. So that's going to be found right here. Pick up. And we're going to want to make sure that we equip this guy. And that is right here. Boom. Okay. This equals nothing. I want to make sure equals nothing secondary. So that is going to run at first. This actually needs to be, we're going to do it like this. I think I have to nest it twice. Yeah, because that's looking for if you have anything equipped first, right? Yeah. So, so I need to actually if you have do... something equipped, then something else happens. And if you have something equipped and something is in the secondary slot, then bam. Yep. So I have to, I need to actually nest it twice under both conditions. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to do when this equals nothing, actually. Boom. Because this is that very unique case where it only happens, will only happen once in this game. Okay. Perfect. Sweet. And now one thing I want to make sure is I'm also keeping track of the display. Um, so I know what's going on. So let's see here. Um, you always need to do a display at some point for debugging. So if I mess up during stream, I can see what's kind of going on. So let's go secondary weapon. And so equip weapon when it does not equal nothing. And then we're going to say when this also does not equal nothing. Equal to nothing. We're going to display, and I think I got text already in here from my previous secondary weapon, plus that guy. So we're going to make sure we're always keeping track of what actually is that variable. And I need to make sure I'm saying name here, and that is under appearance, name. else. We're going to display secondary weapon also equals nothing. Okay. 
And do we really want, we could actually just pull this out. This doesn't need to be nested under the other one. There we go. Okay. See, so there's my display. All right, let's see if I did that right. So I picked that up. So the first weapon looks like it works good. Let's see if I do the shift here, boom. Okay, so the pistol went into my secondary weapon slot and, um, and I equipped the rocket launcher. One thing you're gonna notice right away is that the pistol shoe is what I still have. So I'm not, I don't have the, the rocket launcher. Oh, when we are gonna be on these two, I should swap these meshes. <laughs> I'll do that in a second. Um, no, I'll just do it right now. Let me swip these real quick. Laser cannon. There you go. And shotgun. Okay, let's shrink that down a little bit. Cool. All right. So why is that happening with the push logic? Um, well, if you remember from last week, the way that we were adding those brains is, so these brains are right here. This is the one that has the shoot logic. So whenever I'm able to have bullets in my clip, I can use the trigger and I'm gonna shoot this certain way. And we did that for all of these guys, all the different guns. So there's like gravity shoot, shotgun shoot, rocket shoot, pistol shoot. And what happens is we're going by the interact and we don't wanna do it um, like that anymore. Well, we do for the first time, but we have to reconcile when like, oh, when this weapon's gonna be my secondary, I need to be able to switch that. Cool. So let's take a look on that. Uh, let me make sure here. So there's, yep, pistol, and then when I pick that up, yep, it doesn't switch. Okay. So here on my character brain, we need to go back. So on equipped weapon, we need to make sure that I'm adding the brain um, in this case. And let's see, interact. Can I actually end up, um, I don't think I did it over on the other time, but pretty much we, there's a lot of dupe. Now that we're gonna use brain variables, we could pretty much take out a lot of the other logic on each of the weapons. Yeah, yeah, we could. It would be a lot cleaner. So we'll look at doing that. So equipped weapon, so each of these is gonna have a variable. Let's go define that right now before I set that up. So we're gonna do a new brain variable. We don't get to use brain vari variables very much on mm -hmm. stream, which is pretty nice, especially when you're trying to think of what case that is. Now, setting these is a little funny. Um, yes. The, the syntax, I should say, is what's the weird part. So it is add brain, right? Weapon brain equals add brain, and then you say what that brain is. Distinguish with like that. And I'll double check me, because we always forget. Uh, so example island over here, not that one, that one. Yep. Cool. Because add brain is though, basically that's the way to reference in world objects and brains. Uh, get brain will not work. If you're curious um, and you try using other forms besides add, add brain, like get brain, uh, that won't work because this one actually is kind of like taking that brain variable from the world and directly adding that into this variable set. Exactly. So that's, uh, and maybe 50% yeah. of what I said was correct. <laughs> <laughs> see, and you can even, there's some remnants of like other stuff I was doing prior. Oh, I always do that. You can see like on here to get that display. Um, I didn't do this on stream, but I did it before. I was like kind of testing this. So this shoot brain goes this brain brain name. Um, we probably, now that we have a brain variable, we probably would be able to reference that very differently. Mm -hmm. um, this guy. And the last one, weapon brain equals gravity shoot. There we go. And so you can see right now we have this interacted and they're adding that brain. I'm gonna actually try to see if we can take that line out because I wanna try to see if I can do this just directly from the char character brain. That makes more sense. Okay, nope, that's the reload, and right here. Okay, so I'm gonna equip this, and let us look at adding that brain right now. So let's go brain, 
Comes so a brain, add brain. We're gonna add the equipped weapon brains, brain variable. So many brains. Uh, let's find that right here on value. Value and brain and weapon brain. Okay. And we're gonna go with the same. Let's borrow this real quick. I wanna make sure I'm putting it in the same slot channel and all that we were talking about before we used before. go okay sweet cool and I want to see if this works without using that other line now cool is everybody follow following along so far feel free to ask questions in chat and O'Brien's paying attention to it. Yes, I am. I'm reading it studiously. <laughs> um, people are asking a lot of questions on chat just about like animations. Um, on the weapons? Yeah, like reload animations or duck animations or even climb animations. Um, honestly, for, for now, what I would say is, you know, there's the these aren't in-game right now, but um, using a connect or finding someone else, someone who has a connect who can uh, use one, um, those can work pretty well. I've seen some really good um, animations people have made with Connect for those. Cool. And let me see on Rocket Shoot. Okay, so that one actually worked. On oh, I think I know what I did. Let's see. Yes, I see exactly. Since I'm like nesting this under, and this was that unique case, I need to think about these things happening um, for the others too. So it wasn't adding that brain. Okay, so when this equals nothing, and then we wanna do that equals else, and we really do need else there, and we actually need another else. Okay, let's see if that works. Pick that guy up. Okay, pistol shoot. Reload and all that looks like it's working. Pick that guy up, rocket. Pick that guy up, shotgun. Pick that guy up, gravity. Cool. Just to make sure, we'll pick up, we'll kind of switch between these. You want to sometimes, one thing that is a, a surefire way to get yourself in trouble is when you're testing, like you always do the same order of testing, because <laughs> usually as soon as you like mix up the order, you'll realize that you built something for like that one particular pathway, but you have to think like it's going to end up being super variable. I noticed that when I was practicing this too, like switching between, I was like, oh, some of that doesn't work as much as I thought it would, but it looks like everything here is good and dandy. Okay, so now I need uh, to figure out how I'm gonna actually access that secondary weapon. I need that switch, right? So let's go and start looking at that. So we're gonna do a new button press. So that is gonna be under Y. Um, let us put it right, here's interactables and picking up weapons. Let's do that right here. Okay, so let's do when Y is pressed. We're gonna do a bunch of things. So the first, we don't wanna be able to switch weapons when there is no weapon to switch. So we wanna make sure that we're looking to see if we have a secondary weapon or not. So that will be, we want it to, uh, it doesn't really matter. So when, um, when not equal to nothing. Okay, cool. So a bunch of things are gonna happen. So um, I actually found I'm gonna, maybe there's a way to avoid doing a placeholder variable, but that was like the easiest thing that came to my mind um, when I was doing this. So I'm gonna set it up here real quick. Cause we're, we're switching the two around, right? So I have, a, I have a secondary weapon and I have an equipped weapon. Let me find the other one I need. Let me not put them on the same line. Cause basically what we're trying to do is this, right? 
our equip weapon equals our secondary weapon, and our secondary weapon equals our equipped weapon. And we're trying to do that all at the same time. Of course, if I do equipped weapon equals secondary weapon, then when I try to set a secondary weapon equal to equipped, it's setting it to itself because I just changed what it is equal to, right? So we need a placeholder that's going to hold that value while I overwrite one, and then I can get reference the other, and then clean it up at the end. I'm going to make sure I have a wipe here at the bottom. Um, and that's just by, you can, like, I wipe an object variable clean by setting it to nothing, just like that. So there's a number of ways to do this. I'll do temp. Um, the temp is going to equal to the equip weapon. Because uh, so equip weapon is going to get overrided by secondary, and then that will maintain it just like that. So now, let's see, temp equals that. I need you to be temp actually. There you go. All right, and then we actually have to do the pickup and equip, right? And it's going to look very similar to what we did down here. Um, We'll say equip that now. And we want to pick up the secondary. And let's make sure that we also do the logic as well. OK, let's see how that looks. So I can't switch right now because I don't have anything in the secondary slot. And now I'm going to pick up that rocket launcher. So now I do. So now hopefully if I did everything right, I'll press Y and rocket launcher will become my secondary. My pistol will become my primary. Yay! Sweet. And the greatest thing about that is um, it's all working correctly with the, the shoot brain. Um, is also like updating correctly. That was what I was struggling with before prior to stream. Before I realized, hey, I should use brain variables because that's what these things are for. And what's really neat is because I'm keeping all of those variables right in the in the gun itself in the object, like all my ammo counts and all that is retained between them, and we'll just like auto fill based on what my equipped weapon is. I can also like do it. You know, we have probably a lot of time, um, so I can rift on like doing a display also for the secondary weapon and cleaning that up. But here, let's shoot these guys. Uh, remember, you can't. Oh, that's right. Not with the rocket launcher. Uh, we can fix that. We might as well fix that. Yeah, we can fix it. Just to like, like show again how that. <laughs> there you go. How that happens. Oh, I love that gravity gun. Okay, now I'm gonna come in with a shotty. Uh, you're out of ammo, good sir. There you go. <laughs> it's like the perfect shotty. I just love that. Cool. Okay. And see, I can't, I'm I think I built a better version on stream than I built in practice because I was trying to be clean and smart about this. Let's see. So the switching around there worked as appropriately, and the switching there with the add looked good. Okay. Now you're the you're the multi-brain expert, so you have to tell me. So one thing we are not doing, at least I'm not telling it specifically in this case, is like to remove these brains. But if it's, is it because I'm like going to the same slot, it'll replace that brain anyway? Yeah. So that's like that is that's the beauty of multi brains. Um, when you are basically so add brain technically is just stacking brains on top of each other. But when you're saying add it to just one channel and one slot within that channel. Um, you actually don't even have to specify the channel technically because it has a default channel. Mm -hmm. But anyways, uh, when you're specifying just one slot, there can only be one brain per slot. So even by using add brain, you're basically just booting out the current brain in there and putting the new one on top of it. So it's always going to work. And the nice thing is it actually, you could even, um, it remembers its ordering. So like a really nice thing is you could pop one of those brains you just added and it's going to bring back in the previous brain that was running on it. So AdBrain has really has some really nice things that can happen because um, a brain will remember uh, what brains have been added to it um, and taken away from it. So um, your brains are smarter than you think. <laughs> Here, there you go. I like that. 
Let me, I want to make sure everything works fine, because I want to, my end goal, I want to be able to delete. We had this, like, all separate. I had, like, there was a remove brain here on this page, an add brain back on this page, as the guns were changing their different states. Yeah. And I want to see if I you can really get You really only need to do add code. brain. Yeah. Um, yeah, you don't, you don't need to, again, when you're specifying one slot, one channel, you don't need to worry about removing brains. If you add a new brain, it's just going to kick that current one out and run the that one. Cool. Now, I want to make sure, so this is also, I don't know if I highlighted this right, but so when I'm picking up a weapon now and I already have two, it's only going to re replace my equipped. So my pistol is going to stay right where it's at. Because it's my inventory, so that's like the the Halo method of you only are switching out what you have equipped. Mm, yeah. Boom, and the rock launcher. So there you go. Cool. And I want to go through and delete all that code now that I know it's pointless. There's nothing. I think actually that I aim to delete code. Actually. As oh much yeah, as, it's as it's much wonderful. As, yeah, as much as it's fun to add code, I have a lot more fun <laughs> deleting. I. I've grown to love code, and the thing that makes me the happiest is when I'm able to take something that used to be 30 lines and get it down to like three. When oh, I do that, yeah. oh my god, it's an amazing feeling. <laughs> it's like it's one of one of my favorite feelings is when I it's when I can like get something satisfying yeah. down to three lines of code and it runs perfectly. I feel so accomplished. And it's just like so it's better, right? Just like all around, just better. You're just like, man, I wish I thought about that before. Yeah. Um, also, if you want me to. It's going to really bug me that the rocket launcher isn't firing correctly, so if you want me to, I can fix that. But this is in this brain, right? Yeah, you just need to create it uh, plus forward multiplied by one. I think that should do it. Because that, that'll make that'll create the rocket one meter ahead of you, which should fix it. So, bam. Look at there that. You go. Fixed it. Two seconds. Boom. Right in the center. All right. And we could do some fancy stuff on stream now too. Like one thing I want to do, um, like right now we have an instant reload too, and like we should actually, end up, like really in games, there's variable reload times depending on yeah. the weapon, right? And a rocket launcher. That's so easy that, enough to that's do. really easy to do. Yeah. So the way I would go about it is basically introducing a, like timer and a countdown timer or something to that. Um, you'd have to do some kind of UI that notifies the player too. But um, in the meantime. We'll at least get that logic in here. Why not? So I'm gonna go specifically to each weapon, and oh man, see, doing it by each weapon holding its thing is just the way to go. If you're ever doing weapons that are inventory, like keeping it on it is just the best. Same thing, like if you have like money and value attached to it, weight and like all the, like yeah. keep it on the object. Yeah, exactly. Yep, have all variables on that object itself makes it much easier. I mean, yeah. that's what I did with. Um, when I did my inventory streams, that's how I did it as well. Yep. All right, let's do, okay, we'll just do a reload time for each weapon. Okay, so this is a pistol. Um, let's say like this takes like 0.25 or something. That's a pretty quick reload, I think. And then rocket launcher is a really long time. We'll do like two seconds. Whoa, that's a long rocket reload. One 1,000, two 1,000. Yeah. In real life, it takes like a half hour to reload a rock launcher, that's so... True, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. And on this guy, let's do like... Okay, shoddies are pretty powerful. We'll Just do... One. Yeah, one sounds good. One, yeah. That sounds like a good plan. Then like, you know, gravity guns, I think will be like a 1.5. Sure. Um, another nice thing is, so we don't have a connect with us, but I've... Um, I've done in the past where I have connect recorded a reload function. Oh, interesting. Especially with like uh, with the shotgun, I did one that worked pretty well where it's just like they're just entering, uh, putting in a new shell, <laughs> and so I just have that continually go on loop for as long. I as think many that's good for want. like AI. I don't know if you want your player to do it though because like they're emoting during it. Right? Well, exactly. Yeah, the, so exactly. That's, like, that's actually why I did that though because you basically you can't do. You can't do anything else when you're reloading. So it's like, oh man. So that's your design shoot. choice. Yeah, I, mean, you I have to stop I, everything else 
and reload. I couldn't allow... My problem is I couldn't allow the player not to, like, allow them at least to move. Ah, uh, I like, see. You're putting them in, like, a risk, like, at least if you're reloading in reality, right? Like, I can, like, run away as I'm yeah. reloading. Then, like, that a would really, be my main concern. A really easy way to do that, uh, to kind of show reloading, uh, this only really works in first-person mode, but what you can what you can do is like say your your player is like holding out their pistol. Uh, then when they're reloading, the pistol like just moves down uh, and then comes back up when it's like reloaded. So it like gives some visual. You just like okay. it's nice to have a visual indicator that this has now been reloaded. Mm -hmm. um, or else you're just waiting for a random amount of time. Sometimes uh, like a sound indicator also. Can yeah, help. for sure. That's yeah. what we do in Conquerors uh, in the. The Conquer Multiplayer Arena, we have a sound indicator every time you reload because, yeah, yeah because reloading takes like I think half a second, so we kind of have a half second delay, and then you hear the reload uh, sound, so you kind of have an idea that you've reloaded. Yep. Now I have to think about this because right now we have all of the logic for the reload, so that's this right here, this little beautiful thing that we did on day one of this like tutorial series, I guess. Um, it all happens in an instant, right? So if it's under a but an X pressed button, which means that anytime I want to introduce a timer to this, it's not going to work because this all happens in one frame. Mm -hmm. So you have to kind of think about that. So the best way, I think, to probably... Oh, whoa. What did I just do? Um, let's not do that. Okay. Um, actually, probably the way I think about it is using a Boolean, right? I think... So yep. we'll like actually start a boolean. I think that's half of how our things, um, our tutorials go. Yep. Make a boolean anyway. So we'll do reload. That sounds like a good one. Um, so we'll say. Oh wait, reload. you know what? You want to do something really cool? Make say reload equals zero. Oh, you want to do? This is something that not many people know about. That that oh, means yeah. false, yeah. and reload equals one means true. Yeah. So it's just it's just a cool. You can change it. Back. <laughs> it's good. I, if you have this, this is like easier to read. Yeah, I'm yeah, this, a, this is much I'm, easier to yeah, read. But I'm, I'm always a fan of making things easier. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just, I'm just. So zero is false on. though, and one is one true. one is true. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes sense. Um, cool. So X is pressed. Reload equals true. Okay. So how do we want to handle all that fun logic now? So let's copy that, and let's see. So we still want, okay, I still want this. Because I don't want to interfere when I'm trying to pick up stuff. But otherwise, I can, I'll can move this under a Boolean. Oh, Mescad is correct. Zero is false, anything else is true. So I always just did, I always just assumed zero is false, one is true, but I guess two is true, five is true, so on and so forth with numbers. Oh, it's, it's good to know that for right now. One thing I do is I don't delete code until I know something works. <laughs> That's Yeah, like, I do the same. You're, you're just... Yeah, I'll comment it out or yep. ignore it and then I'll like be working somewhere else. Especially when it's like bigger stuff like this that I will hate myself if I have to do it again. Um, okay, so we're going to nest this under a boolean. And we want all these things to happen still in one frame, but it's going to happen under a certain point in time. Now, it would get a lot more complicated, and we're not going to do it on stream as if, like, I want to do a shotgun shell. And if I get interrupted during that reload, then I did, like, three of the five yeah. bullets in my reload. But You could do that. You could actually, it's not too terrible to do, honestly. No, it's not too terrible. It's pretty terrible for stream, I think. Yeah. Because <laughs> I think that would be a whole stream. Um, well, especially if we're doing it from the seat of our pants, we're going to mess <laughs> up a lot. So it's yeah. just, it's going to be 15 minutes of debugging something that we did wrong. Exactly. Okay. So under this now, when this is true, I have a countdown timer on my from my equipped weapon. And then after that time... Um, it is going to do all these fun things. And let me make sure then I turn off reload. So it's gonna go, let's see, countdown very timer. Very last line. Yeah, very last. Although I want it to be like over here. Right. Uh, this is always fun. Um, let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. One, two, three, four should be nested under, I think. I hope. <laughs> Just we'll find out. Whatever you say. <laughs> <I can. laughs> uh, false. Okay. It's really hard to eyeball it. I 
think I think I have one more. Honestly. Well, br bring it all the way out. That's what I usually do. Bring it all the way out? Yeah. Okay. So that's all the way out? Yeah. Goes all right, so you go on two. There you go. So I was right. Um, yeah, you were initially you were initially right, right? Wait, go back to the top, just looking for um, go up. So that's indented one. Once. Yep. Yep. So it should be good. Cool. That's a good strategy. Okay. After that point, um, let's do for everybody's benefit. We won't be able to hear it, but let's do like a little sound or something. Um, yeah. Totally. Not? Okay. So countdown um, on the equip timer. So this is gonna happen after. So we want something to happen before. So it'll be duration timer. Animate a shotgun shell being ejected from the side of the gun each time you pull the trigger. That That is actually pretty easy because if you have uh, the Conquer Pack, which everybody should have it because last week it was one credit. Uh, so, hope, yeah. well, unless you missed that. And that's I'm a, a facepalm if you didn't get it. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry if you missed sorry. that. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. um, or, or you got, you know, in the months beforehand. But um, the SMG uh, from Conquer, uh, from the Conquer Pack so. actually has that code in there where a shell casing comes out of the SMG when you fire it. So just t take that code, and then you can have shotgun shells flying out of your um, out of your gun. Cool. I can't remember if this is like a one kind of just one clip. Because if it's only just one thing, then I might actually want it to play only once it actually happens. But we'll we'll go with that. I don't know if it repeats or not. Um, just one thing I, I always tend to do. Or just do it like that. Um, oh, I just usually just have it started to. Like I set started to play that sound effect. Okay, I'll do it after the countdown timer. Yeah, right. just because then it plays it once, but I also allow for overlapping. I was trying to think of like a sound that was like a like a, it sounded like they were rumbling. Yeah, that one's good. It, but, um, but I would also add in a modifier to that sound effect. Overlap. Um, and overlapping, because sure. that allows it so that if you're rapidly reloading in case the sound file goes on for longer, it, it can start playing again. A lot of times when you have problems with sound, the, the trick is making sure this isn't Yeah, it. and effects. Effects also, that really happens. If you're having some effect happen a lot of times, make sure you have the modifier overlapping going, or else the effect will only play once, and it will only play again the second time once it's done the full loop of the first effect. Cool. All right, let's see if this works. See if I mess anything up. OK, you guys will have to let us know about the sound if that is in fact working. So I'm gonna shoot. And this should be relatively quick. But you can see that delay, there is a tiny mm -hmm. little bit of delay. Okay, so this one should be super obvious now. So I'm gonna shoot that bad boy. Boop. There, there you, you go. go, cool. Although it seems like I, it's broken again, that rocket launcher. It, oh, is it shooting in my face again? Let me do, uh, no, it's in this. I mean, one seemed decent. Let's move it out to the right. I think the right is the problem now. Yeah. Let's do like 0.65. That might look funny, but we'll see. There you go. So it should be no. Do problem. we have time for one request? Sure. Probably. Um, depends on what the request is. Well, this was a bit of a complicated one, but uh, can we show the secondary weapon on the on our person when it's not equipped? Yeah, let's try it. Let's do okay. it. Okay. Yeah, this this might not turn out pretty, especially because we have very variable guns. Yeah. Um, like in right. So if I have a secondary pistol, um, like in this case now, my weapons in my secondary, like that's a sidearm. That's like on my hip. But if a rocket launcher, if I'm pulling out my pistol, my rocket launcher should be on my back, probably. Right. Exactly. So I don't think we're gonna be able um, to get to that specific case scenario. Um, we can, I, I played around with that on my gears level. I didn't end up like actually implementing it when I shared it because um, I couldn't get it to work. Fantastic. But I actually had it where like, you know, because I had different weapon slots too, so you could only carry one type of sidearm, two main weapons, and a grenade or whatever. And so, and then the two main would be like one slot one, slot two on your back, and then you'd have a sidearm, like that would be always on your hip. And you could probably steal, uh, we could probably take a lot of the code that I used for my inventory um, tutorial because I specifically sh like set the position that that item would be on your body. Yeah. So um, you'd have to play around with positioning a lot. Cool. All right, yeah, let's try it though. Let's do, oh, let's just assume. Mescad has the easiest solution, is, is attach a dummy, a dummy wine and toggle its visibility on and off. Yeah, I've done that in the past, too. Um, 
Yeah, that's not a super beautiful way. We could do it on stream though, if, unless that's doesn't. Unless people don't think that's like they want to learn how to do that. They want to try to learn the right way, or like the actual objects on your. Do hand. we have twelve minutes to show them how to do it the right way? <laughs> it won't be pretty, but we would like just do it for the pistol. I think. Okay, like let's, have it at, at their hip. Yeah. Okay. Let's go for that. So one thing is, um, you know, I already have the states in this uh, pistol brain, right? So I have an initialize, equipped, dropped. And there you go. So let's think about this is this is only going to happen and be in my character when he's in his inventory. So I'm thinking like let's introduce a new page like in inventory, and then from there we'll have a whole clean slate of what we want to do with this when he's in that state. Yep. Um, actually, though, no, he scratched that because when he's in inventory, does he not appear in real world? Yeah. So you would need to no he it yeah. So you need to no longer pick up the item. Oh, that's going to break a lot of stuff now. Okay. We can have fun with the last 10 minutes breaking everything, okay, trying to fix yeah. something. We, people can see that Here, the let fact let me, that we're me, not, we're let not do perfect. This. Let me do this real quick. Okay. Yes. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> Let's save. Because we do want to share this one. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Okay. So now, now, I'm com oh, now I'm comfortable breaking stuff. Okay. Let's do it. So um, this will break probably every... Okay. okay, let's do it like this. I have... Let me think. Okay. Yeah, I have an idea. All right, it's, that's actually... All right, this, this should be pretty simple. Instead of pick up, do unequip secondary weapon. Okay. All right, so You're then... Exactly what I um, when... I have this also in another one more spot. Okay. Um, actually, I think it's down. Uh, scroll... Do I not? So, D-Tran and Mescad both have solutions for how to do this with creating a duplicate object, but I think we can do it without creating a duplicate object. We're gonna do that. There you go. Okay, so Yeah, we're, we're gonna attempt to actually have that right. actually thing so be now, on it. So now, on, go to the Pistol Brain. Um, on the pistol brain, create. So after you equip it, it goes here, and then when it's not equipped, currently what I have it is being dropped. Yes. So create a new page. Um, it's called secondary weapon, something along those lines. Uh, how about in, in well in inventory might be confusing because yeah. there's an actual. Okay, so we'll do secondary. Yeah, secondary weapon. Okay. All right. Now go to your other page. Um, the not not the dropped page, but this yep. this equipped one. Um, all right, so now you can you basically set it where when uh, this one is equal to the, the main character weapon. secondary weapon, it switches to secondary weapon page, else it goes to switch page dropped. Yeah, I'm gonna cheat and do a global variable for my player because I think. Oh, it, you should do that. That's yeah. what everyone should, everyone should always have a global <laughs> player variable. I gotta make sure the character actually has that set. Okay, so when global player secondary weapon. Equals me. We're gonna do some fun things. Okay, we're gonna switch over to that other page. Mm hmm. And that is not inventory. We called it secondary weapon. Secondary weapon on the other page. And then that one is now else, that third line. Um, and make that uh, indent that. All right, so that should properly bring it to secondary weapon. I let me check him real quick. He is not global player. This is like the um, probably the first line of code I like add into like Same. all my games. Yeah, you should um you should make it kind of the default to always set your main player to be equal to this object variable called global player. Just make sure that you're also using lowercase player. On the other thing, for some reason I thought you were using uppercase. That's probably not the case. I just wasn't looking properly. Uh, okay, cool. You're yep. using the, right, the okay. same one. So now we're in this brain. So this is after I've been equipped, and then let's go over here. So when I I get on this page after I've been interact with it once, and then I never come back. Mm -hmm. And so this would be as soon as I'm not equipped and not attached, and it's going to check to see if I'm saying you're open. If true, I'm going to go to this page. If not true, I'm going to just go to dropped. So yep. this is still gonna work if I'm the main weapon, then I'll just get dropped to the floor like usual. Yep. So here, 
Now we want to do some, I'm immediately pretty much on page enter, you're going to attach this guy. Actually, you're going to do everything on page enter, I think, pretty much. Pretty much, because you aren't doing anything dynamically with this. Mm -hmm. So uh, you want to attach it to, this one will be to your main character's uh, right hip. It's gonna definitely gonna take some. There we go. I'm like looking for the wrong thing. Uh, it's gonna take some playing around to get it to look right. Yeah. Attach goal main player ver to socket. Uh, positioning socket name right hip. Hip. I think you shouldn't you do attach to socket global player right hip. Looks like it just came up with a. Okay, maybe you're doing it right. Looks like it. I mean, it gave me at least the right modifiers in a row. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, passed it. There you go. Well, we'll try it. You never know. Okay. Yeah. Really? So, right there, that should hopefully look okay. Well,. We'll see what it looks like. But. So pick up the pistol first. Boom. Now that. And move around. All right, so it didn't attach it to you. Attach me. Two socket global player right hip. Oh, oh, sorry. Global player attach me to socket right hip. Sorry. Attach me to socket. That makes sense. Did chat save the day? No, I, I just remembered that <laughs> you were doing it wrong. <laughs> there we go. Yay. All right, so now in order to get that working, you haven't set the angle or its, or its position or anything. Yep. Um, but it's attached correctly to the player. Cool. So, um, you want to attach it first. Uh, attachment should be the, the first thing. Yeah, you should attach should always be the first thing. Then you set the position. Uh, so position would be equal to. And so the nice thing about how we're doing this is in each weapon, it's going to set its position on you. So like uh, someone brought up in chat, you know, the rock launcher is not going to look great attached to your hip. That's that's yeah. fine because we said that. Yeah. the <laughs> pistol will be attached to your hip, the rocket launcher will be attached to your back. So by being set in the weapon itself, you can set where it's attached to you too. Yeah. So D yeah, don't be player... afraid to like split it out like this between yeah. like each object. That was probably when I first got you know started working on like weapon stuff. That was my main oversight when I started building a system. Was I was trying to do it all in like some centrally located thing, and it was a yep. disaster. It's that totally was the fine to break it. Worst away. thing that I decided to so, do. So position, uh, socket. Nope. Goal player position. No, nope, you want to do goal player socket, uh, and then choose right hip. Right hip. Go over one more. Okay, and then you have to do position, and then I want to set it is forward. Yeah. Um, all right, so the reason, a good question in chat, why do you attach before you set the position? Um, so if, if something is moving very fast, um, the position looks at its position kind of somewhere between this frame and the last frame. So sometimes position may not be your exact position at that time, but attaching that, attaching is something that, that updates directly to your frame. So that's something, it's just a bit nicer to attach first and then update your position because uh, attaching uh, updates continuously, um, setting position doesn't update as continuously as attaching. And this, this is, um, really you're only gonna see this kind of difference if you're working with something that is moving, like it's breaking the sound barrier, that's how fast it's moving. Yeah. I am going to do some other, I'm trying to just make it look good now. Goal player forward? Yeah, that should be right. Right, top of the gun, mm -hmm. it's going forward. And then I just, when I just checked it, it the right hip, need, it still needed to come over a little bit. Ah, okay. So let us do now, I'm gonna go global, global player, 
we're gonna go his right. Mm -hmm. So let's go right, and that wasn't a huge distance, so we're gonna multiply on that vector. Um, so these are like, default would be one meter, so we're gonna say like, I don't know, 0.2. So that'd be to the right, 0 0.2 meters. Yep. Cool. It's almost there. Looks yep. like it's a bit too. It needs to go it's tiny like, a bit more down and tiny a bit more right. Yeah. Uh, it might but, be even too right, actually. Or but, sorry, I mean less right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little bit less right and then a little down. But yeah, at this point, all it is is like touch and go mm -hmm. on like what that position actually should be. So, you know, on this, I would probably let's try 1.5. So and then the, we need to go down. Now, when we're setting all of this, um, I'm curious what happens when you switch between the two weapons. That's a good point. Let's uh, we'll have to try that out. Yeah, our our system might not be set up for that. I think you might have to switch back to that page, uh, which originally brought it to secondary weapon, because it's going to be stuck on this this final page now. That's that's Pretty almost there. Close, yeah, it's like really close to being. It's there. a little care little character forward. Yeah, but okay, so switch. Okay, so it's still on my hip. But I did not equip. Yeah, so you need to switch back pages. So so now what you need to do is go inside of that pistol um, and go back I to the, this page. Uh, let's see. I want it on... I want this one. Right? I don't uh, want that one. I want wait, this. go to the dropped page. Go to the dropped page. So switch to page equipped. Okay, so uh, you want to go to the equip page then. It won't change, I guess. You can try going yeah. to the first page. I mean, we have to we have to do a detach. We have to make sure it's detached. Yeah, and so. we have interact interact on all like interact and dropped is what starts those off. Mm -hmm. And then this is just like placeholder until you drop it. Mm -hmm. So we can switch. Um, so immediately after running all this, we'd switch out back out, is what you're saying. Or do we wait? No, yeah, you want to you page switch. And, and also, uh, before you page switch, though, uh, I think you actually want to want to have it so that it understands that you have switched weapons now, and that's when it switches pages. Because it's, it is going to need to, um, it, I guess it'll need to unattach. I'm not sure if it needs to, I, it shouldn't need to set position again. No, I definitely, it should be definitely unattached though. So we're gonna nest these under and we're gonna make sure this is detached, right? And then we'll have, I guess, a boolean on the switch. Or let's see, let's think about this. If um, I do the switch, that means I become primary. Weapon, primary, right? yeah. So I can just say when I equal global players um, primary. See now, too, instead of saying equip weapon, I would have gone with uh, primary and secondary mm -hmm. as like my variable objects. Good thing we're gonna be able to edit those. <laughs> yep. Actually, can we do that already? Or is that T? Yep, we yeah, should be able to. Yeah. Yeah, you can rename it. So that's let's, right. Let's rename let's from do equipped it. weapon to primary weapon. Primary weapon. And what's amazing is everything will get updated. Yep. Yay! Equals me. Okay, so as soon as I come the primary weapon again, I'm going to detach and switch that page. So hopefully that looks okay and works and fixes that. Create your game as you play? Any spark can do it. Spark, activate the portals.